bulk day 24 boys today we freaking are having all the supplements creatine collagen i gotta mix it up and uh i just had a liquid iv a second ago and yeah we got a ton of carbs we're having shoulder day today okay we're gonna do 225 on the overhead press smith machine for probably like five reps we're gonna do it in wraps. Wraps help a crap ton, especially if you've watched Larry Wheels, you'll know that that guy loves to use and abuse his PR wraps, which are the wraps I'll be using today. Link in bio. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just gonna be an all around great workout. We're gonna try to PR everything. I always try to PR the overhead press, the side raises, the rear delt flies, the tricep pushdowns. I think today you guys are gonna be fascinated by my tricep pushdown strength, at least for my age, okay? But it's it's nothing compared to what it should be, right? I'm gonna do the full stack plus a 25, but I should be doing like probably two plates added to the full stack at this point. So just to give you guys a little perspective on where my strength needs to be because I made a video yesterday on how your size goals are directly correlated with your strength goals. Like Arnold didn't have a huge chest for no reason. He could have bench pressed a ton of weight, okay? Because the muscle's there. So did he train just to increase his one rep max on bench? No. But as a result of all of his hard training, he got much stronger. And he was able to do certain feats as a result of that strength. So if you're a power lifter and you have your super arch bench, ultra wide grip, you have your one inch range of motion okay no disrespect to you because your sport allows you to do that you should do what the rules allow you to do the most okay to the fullest extent you should be able to use the rules to favor yourself but my point is you have to do all of those things those little techniques to get the weight up whereas arnold could have just manhandled it because he has a huge chest, right? And he has big arms and everything. So <clears throat> my point is, as a result of all of the, whatever type of training he did that was obviously pretty hard, he could move heavy weight. And that should be your goal in training, not to hyper-optimize technique and to be like a power lifter and try to increase your one rep max, but to get stronger in a bodybuilding context. So like, that's why I always say, okay, I want to do five more pounds for the same amount of reps next week, like five reps, right? And it's actually pretty easy. It's like a five by five rule. If you can increase the weight by five pounds, get five more reps. And that can apply on a bulk. That can apply if you're newer to lifting. And even though I'm not newer to lifting, I still am kind of experiencing like newbie gains just from, I don't know. At this point, I actually don't know because I have been training for a decent amount of time at this point. But I will say, uh, have I made a lot of gains at this point? Yeah, but I still have a lot more gains to make. And I'm excited to, you know, share that with you guys. So that's the approach I have for all my lifts, though. Just how can I increase the weight this week and still do the same amount of reps as last week? You know, try to get five reps. Sometimes I'll get like three and, you know, I try to aggressively push it too much, too much of a weight increase. But a lot of the time, I'm still able to add fives or tens on each side even. Or two and a halfs on each side sometimes. It just depends, you know. <clears throat> anyway, I got to drink this. Any freaking way. Reese's Pieces. Ice cream pie. Syrup. Coffee. We're going to put cream in that too. And I'll tell you guys this. The weight that I've been gaining on this bulk so far has been mainly lean. And uh, that's kind of weird to think about because I still see, like, I still see my sartorius uh, in my legs. I still see pretty nice ab separation, right? My abs aren't blurred whatsoever compared to before. Um, it seems like I'm just staying pretty lean, which obviously is the goal. And the thing is, guys, I used to believe in force feeding back when I actually needed to. There was a time where I, I legitimately could not, like, 
put any food down, okay? And uh, I had to push it. So a lot of you, a lot of you are, you know, hard gainers, so to speak. You have a very hard time gaining any kind of weight, let alone muscle. And a lot of it is just because you don't know how to eat. So you might need to acquire that skill just by pounding down food for a long time. That's what I had to do. I had to learn how to eat like four or 5,000 calories a day because I could barely eat 3,000. You know what I mean? And now I'm at the point where eating whatever I want leads me to gaining huge amounts of weight. I'm no longer a hard gainer. I just kind of gain weight pretty easily. So with that said, I can just abuse some carbs. I can abuse some uh, you know, protein and whatnot, have a ton of it. But at the end of the day, I don't need to like force feed to get a ton of calories in because for the most part, I'm getting my macros in before the gym and after the gym. So anyway, because you guys are sick freaks and you like seeing me chug syrup, we got to do it. Okay. Let's go for just, you guys, you guys will be able to see how, how cool this is. Three, two, one. Mm. I used to let it come out slow, but lately I've been able to just go. Wow, that's good. Mm. Anyway, boys, let's see. Abs are definitely not amazing looking, but they never were. That's part of why we're training them now. So anyway, I will see you guys at the gym. Don't forget to breathe. Oh.
Do they have 2.5s? Bro, 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 bro. You said 10s might be too high. 10s might be too heavy. That's crazy talk. Dude. The carbs are just... The carbs are culminating to full effect. Look at that. You see the vascularity coming in. Just absolutely... What? But what I don't understand is you wasted a set by doing one rep over there because you put on all that weight. That was a waste of a set, wasn't it? Or... I know I didn't eat enough. I'm trying to make up for yesterday's debacle by not eating much today, but I also, I felt so happy. I was like, I'm not, dude, I didn't eat my breakfast until 10, and it was a half of a protein bar, 170 calorie protein bar. That's how bad I felt. And then I ate the other half of it about two hours after I thought I was gonna vomit. Like, I was actually, you know whenever you're in mouth, it's all water and you start spitting away. I know I'm not vomiting. How are you, how do you feel like that? Dude, I had a bad migraine when I woke up. I don't know what, I don't know what it was. Huh? You're doing it right. You're doing good. Go control, hold it there. Hold it there for three seconds. Good job, good job. Up, slow on the way up, contract it up. Good. All right, yeah, good, slow down. Hold on, you got, you got more, you got way more, come on. Remember, it's just 10 pounds. You're good. You're getting dizzy for real? All right, you can put him down. If you need to stop because of that, that's totally fine.
Oh. Oh. Ah. 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 <laughs> All right, it's two twenty. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Ah. Oh. Oh. I literally started floating. Too light? I five. I'm like, dude, I just don't have any You know five is good. Five is what I always try to get. Dude, that was pretty good. You got five on the you got five on a stack and a half? No, dude. What'd you do? A stack. Oh, okay. Yeah. Stack and a half, dude, you're crazy. <laughs> Ugh! <sighs> 
All right, boys. I'm. This is my self-proclaimed greatest shoulder pump of all time, and done with probably probably guys. I just say 200 carbs. I don't actually count my macros. Not gonna lie. I need to count my macros. I would do better if I did, but guys, I kind of just eat intuitively, right? I, I lost a ton of weight just from eating intuitively. I bulked really well just from eating intuitively. And I'm staying lean right now. So anyway, drank maple syrup, had an ice cream pie. You guys saw all of that. I'm pretty sure I showed you all that in the beginning. And uh, yeah, boys, this is solid. So ab separation is still there. It's not as prevalent for sure, especially here. We're starting to get a little foggy, but that upper ab separation is better than it's ever been. And I actually would credit that to the fact that I probably have muscle memory from all the times I used to hit abs before. But anyway, enough freaking yapping, right? We got to get some posing in. So I'm going to zoom in a little more, lower it a bit. Actually, we'll keep it here. Perfect. Okay. All right, boys, we're freaking back home and I got to make some serious protein right now. I, I didn't really get a whole lot today. You guys would be disappointed in me, but I got to probably make, I don't know, like we're talking like seven eggs, some ham, some cheese. You, you get the whole deal. Is there, hold on, let me see about the leftovers. Okay, it does not look like there's, uh, there's yeah, there's no leftovers. There's freaking cranberry sauce from Easter, which as you guys know, if you are well cultured, Canned cranberry sauce is the greatest cranberry sauce. Maybe even the greatest cranberry sauce ever. That was all right. That was decent. I got to work on it. Um, let me see. Cheese. All right. You guys can't see all the action in there, but we're going to have the cheese, the ham. There's got to be some sauce too, bro. Oh, okay. Almost pulled the drawer out. I'm pretty sure... Everybody's got that one wonky drawer in their fridge, right? Nope, just me? Okay. <clears throat> Let me see. I won't leave you guys there too long. So, boys, I'm kind of a hot sauce connoisseur. Well, I don't want to say connoisseur. But I have a quite a fondness for any kind of hot sauce, especially like this is ghost pepper sauce. I love this stuff. And I actually enjoy it. It's not like I don't view it as a challenge. Now... Afterwards, oftentimes, I'll be like drooling over the sink but because it's so painfully hot. But it, it does genuinely, it to me, the flavor profile is worth it. I just something, I love something about the spiciness. And also, guys, if you have any kind of cold or allergies, hot sauce will clear you out, man, if it's hot enough. And that goes for really any hot food. But I keep opening the fridge indecisively, folks. We got turkey breast. Friggin' cheese. Now we gotta get eggs. Okay, there's not that many in this. Let's get the other one. All right, boys. So I'm actually really disappointed that I didn't get to do leg day this week. I was looking forward. Actually, that would be a lie. I wasn't tremendously looking forward to it. Uh, just because leg day, I gotta get excited for it, you know, just like any other day. So. Definitely wasn't expecting to miss it, but that's cause just because I freaking stood up the wrong way and like contorted my back and it felt weird. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do leg day today. So anyway, and that would have been yesterday. So yesterday, that's why we had an off day. Today was shoulder day and it went great. Low back wasn't an issue whatsoever, but that's not the subject, boy. The subject is freaking making some good food here. So I usually just wipe out the pan because we cook with oil and stuff all the time, leave it in there. Then I, 
I like butter. I love butter. So we have to indecisively open the fridge one more time. All right. And uh, yeah, so this was kind of like a prime meal that I would always make myself on the last bulk. And uh, it really did help me put on a ton of weight. Uh, I went from 155, kind of soft. I, I wasn't even that, I was lean-ish. Uh, I was probably about as lean as I am now. And I went from 155 to 186. And on this bulk, the plan is to get heavy. Okay, I don't know how heavy I'm gonna get, but I have heard rumors that 200 might be a good quality bulk. Now, here's the thing. I, I don't know. Would it be good for me to bulk to 200? I don't know, but I think it's a, we'll see when we get there type of deal, right? I looked pretty good at 186, all things considered, right? And a lot of people might debate that because my waist was starting to get bigger. I was starting to get a little bit of love handles and all that. But I definitely wasn't fat. Was I getting chubby? Yeah. But um, I want to say this too. Uh, I freaking, I don't even remember what I was going to say, dude. I, I've lost my train of thought because I'm trying to do this at the same time as talk. And I'm not used to cooking and talking at the same time. But yeah, I mean, I thought I looked pretty good. You know, I didn't, I, uh. Definitely, it's exciting though that I'll look much better this bulk. I mean, I'm already inclining what my flat bench was last bulk, so that's a huge difference. Plus, I mean, today, I mean, obviously, you guys saw all the lifts, it went well. Uh, except for, I didn't edit my video yet, but there, so I haven't watched it, but there was a rep where I, I dropped the weight because I didn't move the bench far enough or, or close enough to the bar. I like... I like having, when I'm overhead pressing, my chin basically grazing the bar if possible because I love having it directly over me. I just feel a lot stronger that way. And my dad had slid the bench back and he slid it back pretty far. And I, I, I moved it a little closer, but not close enough. And that caused it to just kind of scoop forward on the second rep that I went for. So definitely was not ideal. But anyway, we have to do... We have to toast the bread first, all right? So I just go with basic wheat bread, man. I mean, a lot of you guys have been rooting for me to do a full day of eating. I kind of, I low-key do a little bit. There's some meals that you guys miss out on, but a majority of what I tell you guys about is kind of what I eat for the most part, I think. So, and uh, just a little side note, who really cares about the heel? I mean, apparently my whole family does because they left both the heels. But I, I, I don't mind it. Is it bad? Like, what is inherently bad about it, you know? I, I don't know. Anyway, though, side raises were crazy, dude. I got a ridiculous pump during those side. I mean, I saw veins that I've never seen before. I, I, was, I was always used to just seeing kind of one vein, maybe, at most, when I was maximally pumped and stretched out. But now, I mean, especially that I'm experimenting with high carb, super ultra high carb um i am seeing veins i've never seen before looking leaner at i'm literally 171 so i'm i'm just i'm excited to see what happens on this bulk man i mean i want to definitely get up to more a little more than three plates on the incline uh a little more than hopefully i'll get three plates on a smith overhead press i'm thinking i'll get there I'm thinking I'll get there. It's definitely not, it, it's easier said than done, but I will get there. Uh, and that's the thing, guys, I, I, I've kept talking about this. I am growing real fast, right? And uh, I kind of didn't realize it until today. Somebody pointed out to me that I was growing pretty quickly. And I was like, you know what, they're right. But part of it's just because I'm holding on to more intramuscular water from all the carbs I'm getting in. And uh, part of it's also that I have my training really dialed in. My goal is just to put on tons of mass. And uh, in order to do that, guys, my, my number one lesson that I just keep talking about every video is just don't do like, don't do baby exercises. Don't do ultra light weights. Uh, and that's if you want to get huge, okay? Just try to progressively overload every session. Eat enough. Eat over your maintenance. Uh, if you want to do super lean bulk, that's fine. 
I've made tons of progress while basically at maintenance. Uh, so maybe that's just a genetic thing for me. Maybe I'm blessed in that area, but you know, I don't even know. I said it earlier when I was doing tricep pushdowns. Uh, I think a lot of people in the future are going to tell me that I just have really good genetics, but the reality is it took me like forever to get to where I'm at now. Like it was not overnight. It took me five years of learning and trying to figure out different things. Like I didn't do my first bulk till I was probably like 15. Right. And, uh, before then I had just done like push-ups and sit-ups really and just different kinds of like six minute abs from Athlean X. Um, I would do push-up workouts like and try to get like a hundred reps, stuff like that. Uh, and obviously that would be after multiple sets cause that was hard. But, um, you know, that's what I did for a few years. And so when I posted, uh, you know, five year realistic transformation on Instagram, like 13 to 18 years old, a lot of people were like, Oh my gosh, dude, you made no progress. And I'm like, I, well, first off, I definitely made a lot of progress. It's very apparent. Uh, and second off, I didn't use fancy lighting angles, pump, none of that. And that's what most influencers are scared to do because it'll break their image. But I'm not scared to just be transparent with you guys. You, nobody looks huge all the time unless they're just a mass monster for the most part. Or unless they're super shredded with their shirt off at the beach, then they look maybe jacked, you know. But third, um, it's a process, man. Nobody gets big overnight. There are some transformations that I'll see where a kid who's, you'll take him, he's 16 and you know you'll train him or whatever and uh well not you'll train him but you know what i mean he'll get trained and uh he'll get jacked in like six months he'll get really big and maybe even you know almost as big as me now and the reality is a lot of that has to do with uh knowing the right things to do right not everybody starts off right especially me i, I didn't I didn't care about progressive overload. I didn't care about bulking and cutting. Uh, I didn't care about getting stronger. All I really cared about was like what I knew. And at the time I knew mind muscle connection. I knew basic stuff. And I also tried to avoid getting hurt a lot. And that pretty much prevented me from making like any real progress for a very long time. And the reality is if I had to just tell you guys a couple pieces of advice, to get you out of that like learning stage so you could start making crazy progress. It would just be progressive overload, man. Eat over maintenance, you know, try to do a bulk, especially if you say, oh, I can't gain weight, you can. You just have to force feed, I did it. I was never a big eater, but then I learned how to eat tons of calories on the bulk. And I would legitimately have like 4,000 a day, like counted out, I knew for a fact because I would put together bulk meal, I'd count the oats, I'd count the milk, I'd count the scoops of whey protein, the peanut butter, the honey, the whipped cream, the chocolate chips, whatever else I put in there. And at the end, you know, that was one meal that would equal out to anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 calories. And um, that was just literally one meal. And then I would have two portions of dinner, and dinner was usually like, uh, McCormick recipe chili with double ground beef. And, um, you know, that would be about 800 per bowl, 800 to a thousand. It would just depend on how big the bowl was. And then I would have this sandwich that I'm making right now, right? Less eggs than I'm making now, but I would literally have this sandwich. So I was legitimately pounding down food 24 seven. I felt sick all the time. I felt lethargic. Definitely not like I do now. I feel great now. And um, I don't know, I'm just saying, if you feel like you can't eat enough force feed, get out of that phase where you don't think you can bulk. Um, just get over it, man. Just get over it. I was, for so long, I was scared to bulk. I legitimately was scared because I'm like, I don't want to be unhealthy. I don't want to this, that, all these excuses, you know, it might be hard on my digestion or you just got to learn to adapt, man. You got to think there's a ton of people who've done it before you. It can't be 
it can't be that impossible, you know? So learn how to eat more. I'd say that's one of the more important things for sure. Because most of you who are even interested in getting bigger probably already got the hard training down, okay? If you're really actually serious about it, you already train pretty hard. But the diet needs to support that. And I think that's what I'm learning more about on this bulk. Like last bulk was just me pounding down anything. This bulk is me taking in hundreds of carbs, okay? Every day. You guys saw everything that I had this morning and it was just to support massive amounts of force production today to drive some PRs. And I did really good in my opinion. So, and that's the thing. You shouldn't be having weaker workouts. Every workout, you should get stronger, okay? Uh, you should get, especially, man, if you're in the first few years of lifting, I'd even say first five years of lifting. Every workout, you should be making some measurable improvement, okay? And um, I don't know, dude, just, it's simple. You know, focus on stuff that's stable, stuff that you like, and that's another thing too. Just do what you like, man. I mean, all these people will demonize a certain exercise. Oh, this is bad, or this one's good. As long as it takes the muscle through a good range of motion, doesn't even have to be like a full complete, but just a good range of motion. Um, as long as it's hard and you feel like you can target your muscle well during that exercise, um, as long as it's generally worked for most people to put on size, just do it, man. I mean, even then, like, I don't even think deadlifts are a great back exercise, but I don't think that if I got really good at them that my back would be small. I think my back would grow a ton just because of the evidence that I've seen about it, right? So that's the thing. A lot of people, man, they say, oh, deadlifts are bad. Why would you ever do deadlifts? Well, the proof is in the pudding. Although, based off of reasons that I currently know, it is not a good exercise for back growth. But based off of anecdotal evidence from every major power lifter I've seen, uh, they usually have huge backs. So that's all I'm saying, especially, I mean, this is an extreme example, but you look at Larry Wheels. I mean, the guy, he is pretty much, no offense, but he has pretty much terrible form on like every exercise, right? But the one thing he was really good at and, you know, did conventional and everything is deadlifts. And he got super strong at that, did like 930 for three or something. And look at how big his back is. I mean, his back beats everybody else's last time he competed. So, yeah, I mean, and don't focus on isolations too much either. You see me doing isolations now because focusing my energy is genuinely a concern of mine, right? I need to say, all right, it's really hard for me to curl 120 pounds like this, preacher style. So if I could do 60, that's going to be way easier on my mindset and everything. I could probably take it closer to failure and go harder and focus really intensely on getting up that one arm. Whereas if I'm doing both arms, I might be more limited and might not get as much of the focus, right? And that's something too about training. You you need to really focus and dial in. You can't be on your phone. You know, you can't, if you're gonna be on your phone, it should just be to pick a song, right? And in my case, all I do is pick a song at most. And even then, usually I just use my headphones to do that. And I will turn on my camera, make sure I'm in the frame, whatever, and I'll go and start lifting, you know? And uh, you need to have that focus because if you lose focus when you're training, it's almost like you're getting, you ever play like Call of Duty and you get freaking stunned, you know, like by a, a stun grenade, it almost feels like you got stunned when you lose focus in your training, right? When you're talking to people, when you're, on your phone, when you're just doing stuff that's mindless. I gotta turn this off, I think these eggs are overcooked. But when you're doing stuff that's mindless, it's gonna take your focus away from the target muscle. And uh, you're not gonna be able to put as much crazy energy into the set. And that's the thing guys, you need to put crazy energy into your sets. You need to be consciously going super hard. These two eggs are gonna go onto my sandwich. I overcooked them for sure, but it's not too bad. I've done it way worse before. So, <clears throat> oh boy, those smell good. Yeah, that's the thing. I didn't think that I trained harder than other people for a while, but now I'm at the point where I, I think 
that can genuinely separate most people. Like, I don't mean to sound gimmicky and like, oh man, I train harder, but that is actually a genuine thing, right? You'll hear, I, I used to hear guys who would say, oh, I just train harder than everybody else. And I'd be like, yeah, right. Like, it's, it's, it's not realistic to say that, it's just not a realistic thing to say for the most part. But a lot of the guys who say this have the results to show that they train harder than everybody else and just put that level of focus into their training like I have been talking about. So anyway, that was quite the yapping session. I hope that held you guys over. Okay, we have some of this ready. What I do from here after I make the eggs, right? I just make them all at once. Um, I'll take the turkey breast or whatever, whatever deli meat I have access to. Because you, this is kind of a deli meat driven recipe. Uh, I'll show you why in a second. But we got a thick slab here. Let's see. This is four slices. So that is 20 grams of protein, which is actually, it's not that good for four slices. Well, let's see how many calories it is. Maybe it's good for the calories. Okay, 60 calories. So it's 120 calories for 20 grams of protein. That's not bad at all. Um, once I get a slab of meat, you guys could see it was literally a slab of meat. I get the cheese and I just sprinkle it onto that slab of meat. Well, I don't really sprinkle it. I kind of just heft it onto there, you know, get a nice big chunk, a rotund chunk of cheese. In the gym, achieve failure. In the gym, achieve failure. When you're uncomfortable is when you grow. When you're at the gym, when it hurts, when you don't feel strong, that's when you grow. I mean, there are many times where I, I looked at myself and said, do I really have what it takes? I mean, I was always wondering if I should keep going. And the answer was always, I have to. I have to, I gotta get up, I gotta keep going. Woo, boys, that Tom Platz is hitting different. Oh, I feel like a leprechaun on St. Patrick's Day, dude. Holy crap, bro. Oh my goodness. You get the cheese melting onto the turkey right now. And um, we got Melinda's ghost pepper sauce. We got Marie Sharp's. Belizean heat habanero and um, I, I gotta tell you guys This is not a gimmick thing. This is a legit ghost pepper. I don't know if it's focusing on the ingredients But that has, it says ghost pepper mash um, Yeah, that's it's spicy It's actually so spicy it almost takes away from the flavor like it's that crazy but, oh, hold on. We got to turn up the heat again. It was sizzling, so not going to lie. I thought the heat was still on. That's on me. But one thing, one, I, I might mistake the heat for being on, but I'll never mistake it for being off. I, I freaking eyeball that thing. Make sure the heat is always off because you don't want to leave the gas on. Come on, bro. My way of training is I pretend I have a wet towel and I need every drop out of that towel. I won't give up. I won't give up until I get every drop out of that towel. Mm. There's no hold back. There's no playing around. There's no just doing it for Facebook or Instagram, you know? This is like training to me was like life and death. More! Do me! Ah! I like giving it that much when you're totally spent. The feeling is wonderful. There's nothing you can't do when you give it that much to something. You forget about yourself. If I give it everything I got, I can't lose because I gotta keep giving more. I would squat twice a month. Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> You could do leg presses, but why? Why do an inferior movement now? I actually, it's, <laughs> listen dude, I love Tom Platts. And I agree with like pretty much a lot of what he says. 
But dude, I definitely, I don't even like leg presses, but I definitely, I actually hate the way they feel. But I do see the merit in them, okay? Uh, for me, they just don't feel like right for my anatomy for whatever reason. They like, I'll be doing it and I feel like I'm gonna slide up the bench no matter what, kind of annoying. But at my peak, I did with a solid full range of motion, I did seven plates on the leg press for like, I think I did, I think it was like 15 or something. It was like 10 or 15 There's something between there. I don't want to lie about it on accident, but it was definitely at least 10. And, um, do you want to walk out that door? A damn loser. You want to walk out that door? A winner. Mm. Anyway, low key lost my train of thought. But we got two eggs on the sandwich. That's how I like it. Turkey breast is uh, in the pan still. All right. Yeah, these are pretty small pieces of bread for this. I usually get bigger pieces of bread because then it can fit the meat onto it better, but that's fine. All right. Guys, what do you think? You think this is melted enough? There's like one part of it that's not melted. I, I can't cheat myself. I gotta let this thing fully melt. It was a solid workout though. I'm, I'm excited, boys. You, 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 gotta, you gotta move heavy things, okay? Gotta move heavy things, eat more, freaking go heavy, ego lift maybe. I wouldn't even call it ego lifting. I would just say definitely going heavier all right and the form is not going to be perfect when you're doing your max potential on a lift but that's where winning is no uh, okay i'm gonna stop trying to be tom platts for five minutes actually i don't even know if i could do that this is smoking like crazy i think this is the most we can get out of this uh all right boys you slide that on to there the pan is off. Make sure, boys, if you're cooking, make sure the, the flame or if you have an electric stove like a loser, make sure you turn off the freaking, you know, the knob, you know, make sure the knob says off or whatever. I mean, dude, I don't know how electric stoves work. I don't have one because I'm, I'm not a loser now. I don't mean to make fun of you guys too hard, but my brother has an electric stove. So I guess if he's watching this video, he can be offended, but... <laughs> Fan, sorry, flame is off. Okay, always make sure the flame is off. Always make sure the flame is off. Now, we're gonna get a little bit of ghost pepper on here. Okay, that's a lot, all right. That's a decent amount, nothing crazy. Uh, let's see. This habanero is so good. This is actually the tastier of the two sauces. I just like the intensity of this ghost pepper. And is this maybe excessive? Sure. But this is my second diet Sprite. Mom, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I know I probably shouldn't be taking two because we need the rest for the family. But I'm, I'm taking two today. But then again, I took three... Uh, ginger ale the other day i don't know man i've just been kind of on this diet pop kick but anyway i gotta freaking show you guys a close-up of this the bottom the, the plate is pretty much soaked because it's so hot you guys know how hot foods are and the eggs are overcooked like i said the cheese is melted pretty well on top of the turkey on top of the eggs in the sandwich and, uh, you know, I could add other sauces, but I don't have any in mind right now. So this is going to be decent for protein. What did I have? Six eggs. So that's 36 grams of protein plus 20 from the turkey plus the cheese probably gives me like 10. <sighs> 66 grams of protein, man. And that's not enough. I need a lot more. So... Let's think. Okay, we might be scrooged. Um, I always believed in training hard. Real stupid, brutal hard. Anyway, boys, 
We're putting the Sprite back because I'm making a protein shake. Oh, and boys, the best way to grow is to realize that you're not big enough, okay? The whole time that I've got to this point in my physique, I've been thinking, I'm not big enough, I'm not impressive, I look like nothing, I'm skinny, I, especially with people saying I have a sleeper build and whatnot, and that kind of being uh, what made me more well-known on the For You page, I was always thinking, man, I must look like I don't work out most of the time. That freaking motivated me, and I think it's kind of like when you put a fish in a small tank, and he gets big enough to fit that tank neatly, right? And from there, he thinks, oh, I'm huge here. There's no need to grow. And then his body acclimates that and he doesn't grow. But if you put a, if you put that same fish in a pond, the, the thing will grow like crazy, okay? So get yourself out of a fishbowl. Put yourself in a pond. Or don't even put yourself in a pond. Put yourself in a river. Better yet, put yourself in a lake. Better yet, put yourself in a freaking ocean. Better, no, there's no better yet. The ocean's probably the biggest body of water that you could put yourself into. I mean, look at the blue whale, man. So definitely realize, you know, that there's work to be done. That's kind of the whole, the whole thought process is, oh my gosh, I have work to do. I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. You know, don't be content with where you're at. That's going to kill your progress, you know? And, um, also another thing too, to help you to have this mindset, wear really huge clothes. Like right now I'm wearing a 2X, okay? And I, I pretty much only get 2X shirts at this point. Uh, now if I, I'm trying to be like more professional or, or you know, like if I'm going to church or whatever, I'll try not to wear stuff that's huge because that kind of looks tacky, you know? Looks a little bit silly. But, um, you know, at the gym, at home, when I'm just chilling, you know, a lot of times it'll just be the big shirts or whatever. And uh, especially at the gym. Uh, a lot of times, you know, during the summer, you're probably going to see me wearing just big shirts and not hoodies as pump covers. And that is going to, uh, you know, if you do that, it's going to make you feel the need to fill it out, right? Because what is the mo like one of the more common things, right? Mo a lot of guys, actually, I could use more of this. A lot of guys go, oh man, I want to fill out this shirt. Dude, we'll get a big shirt, get a huge shirt. So that way you feel the need to fill it out, right? And uh, that's going to, you know, that's going to make you bigger. Honestly, I'll go as far as to say it'll probably make you bigger if you feel like that small fish effect, you know? So, you know, that's the thing too. I don't think comparison is a good thing, right? You shouldn't compare yourself to people, but to see, right? Like when I go on Instagram and I see a, a few notable guys who are about the same age as me, right? A lot of them are bigger, right? And some of them are even a lot bigger, right? And uh, that's the thing, guys. Your goal should be to say, I want to be bigger than those guys. I want to be bigger than the biggest version of what I think I could be, right? So just keep freaking going, man. Don't stop. Try to get huge measurements, try to make your goals crazy and unrealistic, and you'll get there. You'll get at least, I'm going to say at least three quarters of the way there if you set a goal that you perceive to be crazy, right? Like, I want 20-inch arms. I know for a fact I'm going to get 18-inch arms, probably, potentially even soon, okay? Because last bulk, I was bordering on uh, like 17 and a half with a pump. So in this bulk, I think I'm going to be way bigger, way stronger in every way. But anyway... I had fun with you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you tomorrow for some heavy... Well, actually, I'm not working out tomorrow. Well, so <laughs> I will see you guys tomorrow for whatever I do tomorrow. Have a good one, boys.